What's going on guys? Welcome to VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. I want to thank you for joining us today on the show. As always, right here on Red Carpet, we bring you the latest in entertainment news, in sports, in fashion, in film and television from around the world. Let's come on with the show. Now March is Women's History Month. So let's take a look at how some stars have been celebrating women and their impact around the world. Chaka Khan and Adina Menzel recorded a new version of Khan's anthemic I'm Every Woman in conjunction with a new campaign by CARE on International Women's Day. The campaign celebrates the strength of women around the world and calls for supporting women and girls in need, helping further economic empowerment, fighting gender-based violence, and providing access to essential services and resources. Meanwhile, stars including Celine Dion, Cher, Billie Jean King, Cyndi Lauper, and Gail King helped launch a new United Nations-backed initiative which coincided with International Women's Day. We All Rise, a multi-year project promoting gender equality and women's empowerment founded by David Clark, focuses on highlighting the problems made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic, while also celebrating the work of women and girls around the world to shape a more equal future. The UN's Veronica Birga emphasized the importance of the project and the meaning behind its title. We All Rise will shine a spotlight on inequalities that are all too often ignored and will promote stories of hope and progress to inspire action and drive progress towards true equality. Because gender equality is not only a fundamental human right, it is essential to achieving a peaceful, prosperous and sustainable world. And when women and girls, in all their diversity, are empowered and treated as equal, we all rise. And the celebration of women continues in sports. The NBA and the Basketball Africa League have launched a number of initiatives in Africa, primarily to raise awareness of gender-based violence, support girls' education, and grow female participation in basketball. And we we'll continue with the show. Two documentaries shine a light on women defying the odds in the face of brutality and corruption. BOA's Penelope Palou spoke with the filmmakers and has the story. Hogir Hirori says he came to the dangerous area to film his documentary Sabaya armed with both a gun and a camera. One of the hardest things in the process of trying to find the girls is that uh, ISIS uh, switches locations of the girls all the time. Hirori, an ethnic Kurd who fled to Sweden, sound and find a purpose saving others. In the documentary Writing with Fire, 32-year-old Mira is the chief reporter of Khabar Lariya, the only newspaper run by women in the Indian province of Uttar Pradesh. Filmmakers Arintu Thomas and Shushmit Ghosh of the acclaimed documentary Writing with Fire explain how these Dalit women defy India's rigid caste system. I mean, mostly Dalit women for an upper caste man would essentially be women who would be cleaning their toilets. But when they're confronted with the sight of a woman with a mobile phone asking them questions, they don't know what to say. I, I think essentially they're stumped. <laughs> The film shows these women asking men in power positions hard questions about rape, corruption, and oppression of minorities. Some have only basic education while others have studied journalism. Many are mothers and wives. Mira, for example, has managed the household since the age of 14. The filmmakers say, despite the patriarchal Indian system in Uttar Pradesh, these women enjoy the support of their husbands and fathers, they are breadwinners who work hard. This is their everyday routine. You're taking a train for a couple of hours, and then you're taking a bus, and then you're taking a rickshaw, uh, and then you're walking for about two to three hours to get to a village that doesn't exist on a map. That journey itself can break you down. Armed with their mobile cameras, these women push through boundaries. Khabar Lariya, the digital news platform they created, boasts 150 million viewers so far, 
and is growing. Penelope Pulu, VOA News, Washington. And some new controversy for Britain's royal family after an interview on US television with Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle raising questions of possible racism in the royal family. Our own Harry Ridgewell has more from London. Buckingham Palace had hoped that Prince Harry's marriage with Meghan would modernise the royal family. Instead, it has created new troubling press reports. Prince Harry's wife, Meghan Markle, whose mother is black and father is white, told interviewer Oprah Winfrey the family had refused to make her son Archie a prince and an unnamed royal had raised concerns about the colour of his skin. So we have in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title, and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Harry and Meghan stepped back from their duties in March last year after struggling with royal life and moved to California. Meghan said Queen Elizabeth had always been wonderful to her. The former actress said she had struggled with what the couple saw as racist attacks in the press and had suffered suicidal thoughts while pregnant but had received no support. Harry described how they had been cut off financially and said his father, Prince Charles, the future king, refused to take his calls. I had uh, three conversations with my grandmother and two conversations with my father um, before he stopped taking my calls. The revelations will be painful for Queen Elizabeth, whose husband, Prince Philip, is in hospital, and the extent of Harry and Meghan's broken relationship with the palace has been laid bare says royal analyst Richard Fitzwilliams. They feel angry and bitter. This is an ultimate act of revenge because it's unclear precisely how the palace will respond to it. However, you cannot do nothing when allegations of this sort are made, and most particularly the allegation of racism. That will be absolutely toxic. But this is, I would emphasize, only one side of the question. The allegations are proving divisive among the British public. As a black woman, she didn't get it very easy within the royal family. Um, and the newspapers weren't exactly friendly about it either. I think they've done the wrong thing, and I'm sorry, really, because um, I don't think they've done themselves any good at all. A shame. The royal couple visited South Africa in 2019, a country with which Harry has forged a close bond. Residents of Johannesburg Monday offered support for Meghan. As soon as they got married, you know, the, the British tabloids just started attacking her from the way go, they started attacking her. So I think there is a racism uh, playing part. The interview could impact Britain's image abroad, says Fitzwilliams. I think Britain perhaps has got a problem here because younger people, persons of colour, uh, you will find um, perhaps different views. It will be interesting to see the polls, but this is terribly destructive. Harry and Meghan also revealed they are expecting a baby girl, a sister to Archie. But the interview will be remembered for seismic allegations made against the royal family as the world awaits its response. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. And now for some music news. The brother of George Floyd, the black man who died in police custody last May, plays drums in an upcoming album of protest anthems. Terence Floyd is fulfilling a dream of his late brother, who once dabbled in music in Houston's hip-hop scene. Terence Floyd is helping produce and promote an album of protest anthems inspired by the Black Lives Matter demonstrations sparked in part by his brother's death. I'm using my, my Floyd musical ability to uh, reach people in his name because his heartbeat is not beating no more, but I could beat for him. No justice, no peace. 
He told the Associated Press that the Untitled Project follows a long history of racial justice messages and protest slogans crossing over into American popular music and culture, including its lead single, No Justice, No Peace. No Justice, No Peace. When I, when, when I first heard that, I thought violence. I, I thought that's what I was thinking before. But now it's a narrative of if, if you're not going to give us justice, then no, no, nobody's going to be. If we don't have peace, then nobody have peace because we are a significant. Us as Black African Americans are a significant part of this country. So we don't have no peace. Nobody has it. And as we come to the end of our show this week, let's go to South Africa where the Ndrovu Youth Choir of South Africa formed in 2009 but got its wings in 2019. Heather Maxwell spoke to two of them. Here's what they say. Well, um, I'll start. I know it's ladies first, but I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Sandy Le Majola and I'm 26 years of age. I've been with the choir since 2009. Before it became professional. I am Nyelo Masano. I've been with the choir since 2015. I think it's been six years. Yeah. All right, so let's watch a little bit of We Will Rise and then I'll, we'll come back and talk about it some more. Oh, and you wonder if the sky will fall and your hair can stop spinning around when everything is tumbling down and you're scared. Okay, now this is a beautiful music video, very inspiring, but it's just one of many videos that you guys have put out. So how is this one different than all of the other visual performances you've done? This one is different because it came out on a, as, on a very difficult time as we are all facing this pandemic right now. And the message that we wanted to send out was that we will rise above whatever that we're facing right now. I notice you're performing in an auditorium that has empty seats in the background. At one point in the middle, the curtains open and, you know, it's, an, it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> it really is empty and that's, that's the life right now. Yeah. How has the choir shaped your lives? Your, it has shaped our lives in, in, in different ways. It has given us all voices, it has hope, dreams, it has given us a space to dream and to feel that if you can dream it, you can be it, you can do it. The stages that we've been, the people that we always look up to, we we are now working with them. We are now amongst the greatest people that we've always seen on TV. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. I want to thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. We are also on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube where you can watch our videos. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, catch you right here. Goodbye, everyone. Uh -huh.